Hi, Taras Pluskin here. And, well, you may have noticed that I've been gone a little bit from the Top Shelf Aquatics YouTube channel. And the reason for that is I've been building a laboratory. Yes, Top Shelf, we are starting a new fledgling aquaculture facility, not one dedicated to corals like our mother facility, but one dedicated to our live feeds, sustainable cleanup crew, and oh so much more. Now, one of my personal heroes, Jacques Cousteau, took a, a broken down minesweeper, a British minesweeper from World War II, and through passion, innovation, converted it into the Calypso Lab. A, a giant mobile laboratory that brought innovation and passion, new technologies, and introduced uh, people world over to the oceans and the many wonderful majestic creatures within it. So with this humble LFS that is no longer running that I was given, we have reconstructed it, gutted it, and turned it into our own Calypso, the Calypso Aquaculture Laboratory. Now, this is a laboratory where we are going to be pursuing, and I hope to pursue, the same essence, the same spirit and passion that Jacques and his crew pursued. It is my humble passion to be able to pursue that same spirit in our exploration, not of the wild oceans of the seas, but these tiny, majestic worlds inside of our aquariums. And to understand these worlds and the creatures within them on a very small, intimate level and to glean that understanding and use it, use it to be able to grow these creatures, not collect them from the sea and house them for a period of time, but able to grow them over generations, make them appear here in Orlando, a place that would otherwise be just surrounded by dry land. Here, now in this laboratory, a place where aquaculture, marine organisms can be born and give birth, a place of Genesis. Let me show you a little bit about my lab. The west side of this building used to be dedicated to dry goods, the cashier, it was, the, it was just the left side of the LFS. It had all kinds of dry goods and the like. Now we've isolated it into three independent modular rooms, each one with its own mini split AC. This is crucial for two fundamental reasons. One, we now have the power of spatial discrepancy. We can keep strains of microalgae well away from each other, preventing all risk of contamination via accidental splatters and drips and even, God forbid, leaks and catastrophic events. Due to the spatial discrepancy as well, we are able to keep very, very fragile strains such as Rhodomonas well away from the more charismatic and aggressive strains such as the Tetracelmus. The individual mini splits in each room allow us to have environmental temperature control as well. Another critical factor, we are no longer subject to the environmental sways that come that came with operating inside of the farm. We have all kinds of people that were coming in and out, violating just the amount of actual contamination that could have occurred on their boots and on them. We are eliminating the amount of temperature control. We are now allowed to keep this at a consistent temperature. It is no longer gonna be swayed by the door opening or closing or whether or not we have the farm garage doors open. This level of control allows for consistency. Consistency allows for strong, happy, and reliable algae. And that's what we want. Now, we can keep our more sensitive and easily contaminated strains far away from more robust cultures, such as our Tetracelmus here. Now, with our extra space, we're not all, only allowed to keep things cleaner and isolated, we are allowed to scale up production. This scaled up production not only allows us to offer more consistent, larger amounts and more reliable products, but also allows us a wonderful usable surplus, something that makes a young aquaculturists such as me, their mind go crazy with all the different sea urchins, oysters, all the different phytoplankton consuming critters that we could potentially have, let alone the different strains of copepods and therefore larvae that we could potentially rear now that we have all this high quality live phytoplankton on tap available 24 seven, 365. Room three is currently where our coke pod and zooplankton production is going down. We also have various R&D projects that we're getting off the ground in here. 
which is why we'll be only sharing some details with it in the future. Anyone who knows me well knows that I'm constantly wriggling through Florida's many mangroves, swampy areas, and sand hills. And well, I like to scavenge from time to time. So we are playing around with some more brackish water and estuarine plants. The red mangrove being the most obvious choice, but we'll be, we'll be very excited to discuss more of these and other types of critters that could be collected around Florida and explore their potential to be formally aquacultured and refined in the future. This laboratory would be a lifeless corpse without a beating heart. A beating heart provided by our wonderful water mixing station, which allows us to strip all of the awfulness and, and gunk that comes in average Florida city tap water, render it into perfect RO, and then reconstitute it into salt of our choosing. This level of control will allow us to play and experiment in ways that a flow through facility dependent on wild uh, water could never dream of. The Eastern wing remains the most intact part of the old LFS. Still has many of the fish that were here when I received the facility. It still has many of the old systems, the old rock, the bacteria, various aspects of these old systems and their living components are being actively analyzed and will soon be recycled into new aquaculture systems that will allow us to scale up not only our sustainably aquaculture cleanup crew agents, such as stomatella snails, amphipods, and brittle stars, but we are very excited that they will hopefully be the homes of some bold new aquaculture offerings that we can bring to you from Top Shelf Aquatics. It will be a slow but worthwhile journey, but through our efforts, we look forward to refining our aquaculture techniques and expanding our current production of our various phytoplankton species, zooplankton species, our Bergia production, our Stomatella production, and introducing an increasing line of sustainably aquacultured live feeds and cleanup crew and biocontrol agents for the reef aquarium industry. Through this effort, we hope that the Calypso Aquaculture Lab will not only be self-sufficient, but become an extremely productive model of an aquaculture inland economic unit and beyond its own sake and being able to fund itself, we hope that and aspire the Calypso Aquaculture Lab will serve as inspiration to other such facilities that wish to operate and grow marine organisms well outside of wild water bodies. We are here in the middle of Orlando, and we are well isolated from wild water bodies, and yet we are growing marine organisms. And by stripping ourselves of all the other conveniences that come with having access to wild water bodies, we are building an understanding of how to grow these, not only organisms, but ecosystems from the ground up. And we hope that the journey that we progress along the way will act as inspiration for many, many, many more generations of aquaculturists to come. I never met Jacques Cousteau and I never will meet Jacques Cousteau, but I do claim to understand a little tiny granule of what he was about. And it was this fusion, passion, innovation. And by fusing effort of both of those together, humanity in all their endeavors, specifically when trying to understand, appreciate, and wield the power of organisms around us that we seek a greater beauty in the world, and not only seek it, but achieve it. So we are very excited with this laboratory to be expanding our understanding of all various organisms, marine, and we will be sharing that with you in various episodes to come. And please like, subscribe. We look forward to seeing you in future episodes featuring us at the Calypso Aquaculture Lab. And just know there are many worlds to explore. Thank you, we'll see you next time.